Hello, so today we're going to talk about bus bars multiphysics in Simlab. So I'll give you a short introduction of what's new, and especially we'll have a long demo regarding the mesh, the supply conductor magnetic application definition, but also then thermal coupling and structural coupling. So the first thing is what I'm going to show you is basically the PIC 2.0. Uh, it's the new upgrade for what was known as Flux PEC, uh, which is now within SimLab. So the idea is that we need a solver to compute quickly parasitic behavior, like resistive inductive capacitive effect in bus bars and other conductors. We need a solution because this device can have a large parasitic behavior like having an impact of signal delay, generate EMI, having extra AC losses, but also having extra forces due to like short circuits, for example. So what we can do with this solver is on one side to predict all these parasitic behavior, to compute them, like get their impedance and extract them. And the second part is actually to supply the device where we can predict all the joule losses, DC and AC losses, but also uh, predict where the current is going inside the bus bars and also predict all these forces. So knowing that we can then couple these results to other multiphysics uh, behavior. So we see we have two applications, parasitic extraction as I said and AC supply conductor on which we're going to focus today. So let's start with the demo. So this is the example we're going to look at. These are two electrical bus bars with multiple connection points. And the first step in this demo is actually to mesh them. So in this case, we're going to use different methods in the mesh controls from SimLab. Uh, especially in this case, we can use the edge mesh element, which is a, a nice way to have refined mesh on the borders. And then we'll have a larger element in the middle of the, the conductors. Uh, we could also apply a skin depth meshing, but it's not necessary in this case. So we just apply this. Uh, there's a few more refinements here and there that can be done. Uh, we're just going to do this one for now. And then we can apply a TET mesh, so a 3D mesh, uh, to fill the volumes and all the conductors with this uh, mesh information. So it will be 5 mm, but with a 0.5 mm on the edges. So it takes about uh, 20 seconds to mesh this one. And then we have these two body parts that we can reuse. So we can even save this for now as a first model. And we can start defining the supply conductor application. So we go into solution, electromagnetics, AC supply conductors. We select our two bodies and we can select a range of frequencies to be solved. In this case, from 100 Hertz to 100 kilohertz, every logarithmic step. So first we are going to need materials. So we can go into SimLab built-in database, import the copper material. Okay. So we load that copper material into our browser. And then uh, we can apply this copper either using the, the assembly browser like this, or we could also do a right click on the two bodies and do material and select copper. Now the next part is about defining the circuit part. So we can open the circuit designer and add conductors that will be linked to our two mesh bodies. So these are N terminal solid conductors, they can have multiple pins. So here we have one with one pin on the top, three pin on the side. We can do a second one uh, as a symmetric to do the second bus bars. And then we can start to add a resistive and inductive component as well as a voltage AC source. So here we speed up a little bit the creation of the circuit. And then we have all the components. So now we can start defining their values. The first one will be a 12 volt AC RMS supply. Then we can define the values of the resistances in this case. So they all have the same 228 ohm. Okay, and then we have the inductors which have a inductive value in Henry as well. And then finally, the last bit is to define the link between these solid conductors and their 3D mesh bodies. So first we can click on the body and then we can click on each pin selection and assign the corresponding faces to these pins in the circuit. 
So with some smart selection, we can even select all the cylinders uh, quickly. And we can go to the next pin and so on and so on. So we need to assign faces to each of these uh, different pins so that the circuit is connected to the mesh bodies. So we can speed up this part a little bit as well because it's just uh, clicking on the different faces. So we can do that for the first solid conductor, of course. And then we can also apply it exactly the same way on the second one. So this time we select the, the white body, uh, select the first pin, which is the, the main input, and then the three, uh, three other links. And we click OK. So now the, all the model definition is done for the magnetic part. The last bit we can check are the different results we want. So if we go to the result requests, we can make sure that we have the joule losses activated as well as the Laplace force. We can turn that on if we want. And we can also check how many cores and how much memory we can assign for the solver. And when we're ready, we can save that, of course. And we can go to the analysis tab and there will be a solve button if you want to solve. Or you can also do a right click on the results uh, where you can do update to solve it. So this solving takes about 20 minutes on, on a laptop. And once you have the result, they will display like this. So you can display different contours like the potential, the current density. So here we can see the current density is different depending on the frequency we select. So the higher the frequency, the more the current density will be on the edges of the conductors. Okay. We can also display this current density as a vector, so if we want to see what's happening and see the animation as well, because this is solved for a given frequency. Okay, so we can see the current density inside for one kilohertz in this case. And we can also visualize the heat loss. So this will be the losses that can be reused when we do the thermal computation for each frequency. Uh, on top of this graphical view, we can also plot some results. So if we go to the plot menu, we can go and then plot, for example, the losses versus frequency. So in this case, we we'll go to body quantity, joule losses, all the joule losses, and we can see the losses on all the body versus frequency. So in this case, the losses are decreasing because we're supplying with the voltage source. So that means if we have a higher impedance, uh, then we have a lower current for the same voltage. So that's why uh, if we plot also the current, we can see the current is decreasing with the frequency in this case. So if we get a current source, we would have increasing losses probably. Uh, but here we have a voltage source in this case. And so that's all for now for the magnetic results. So we can switch now to the thermal computation. So for the thermal, we can add a flow solution. So flow will call the AccuSolve solver. And we can use that solver for CFD or for, uh, in this case, just a very quick thermal uh, behavior. Heat transfer on. And the main part is actually to do a right click here, include the heat source, and we can reuse the heat source directly from the AC computation to this CFD computation. And we can check the total heat source value. In this case, it, the value is very low because we didn't put like a short circuit or anything. Uh, so we have our heat source and we need also some boundary conditions for the thermal. So here quickly we define a convection all around the, the bus bars at 20 degrees. So we have a heat source, which in this case comes from the AC, and we have the wall, which is our convection in this case. So very simplified thermal model here. We could do much more complex than that. Then you can update the results again, like before. In this case, we have results as temperature results. So in this case, it's only a steady state, but we see uh, rising of temperature on the bus bar. And now the last part is about the structural bit. So this time we create a structural solution, static stress. And in this case, we can reuse the maximum of the force from the magnetic to apply it on the structure. So for this, we can check first that in our AC solution, we have ticked the box for compute Laplace force. That's true, that's fine. And then same as before, load and constraints right click, include force from AC supplied conductors. And this force will be mapped and applied as a source, as a load on our structure. We can then add some other boundary conditions such as fixed points. 
So here, for example, we can select quickly all the connection points of the bus bars and make them fixed. So again, we can speed up that part. We can see in green all the fixed points. And again, we can update the results. So this takes just a one or two minutes. And as a result, we can see displacement due to the force. Uh, and we can also see the, the stress applied on the structure. So if you are in the event of a short circuit uh, with a very high current, this could be how you look at the maximum stress, creating some uh, some failures in your in your bus bars, for example. So you can see stress concentration uh, on the borders and next to the connection points. And so that's it for the demo. Thank you for, for listening to me. I hope you, you want to do now multi-physics on bus bars and uh, make sure to, to follow all the, the examples and tutorials about this topic. Thank you.